Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate uh, you taking the time to uh, to dial in today. Um, so uh, we'll we'll start now. Um, my name is Mark Shellcroft. I'm SEO director here at Fresh Egg, and we're going to be talking today about the search landscape and how it's changed um, almost overnight um, during the coronavirus pandemic. And obviously, for us SEOs and marketers, that's had um, an enormous impact um, in a very short space of time. Lots of um, brands have had to tear up their uh, strategies, start again, um, and make quite major changes to how they approach their marketing. Um, and search is, a, for many, many brands, a, a huge part of that. Um, but at the same time, it can be confusing to know exactly how to approach that or how to change tactics and, and what to do. So we're going to try and work through that today. Um, we're going to cover some of the um, tools that you can use and data. Um, we're going to try and share as many examples as we can of, of things that we've seen um, and things that our clients have been working on um, where we can. Um, and we'll be talking about things from both a strategic point of view, how to kind of adjust our thinking and, and our strategies, but also tactics that you can try and employ when it comes to your content, um, and your SEO efforts. So to help with that, I've got three um, fellow fresh eggers alongside me. Um, so I'll introduce them. We've got Duncan Copeland, who's an account director here at Fresh Egg. Um, we've got Ryan Ogilvy, director of content and social media, and then Steve Teese, head of organic search. So thanks guys for, for joining. No problem. Um, what we'll do is we've got um, a few topics that we're going to talk around. We've had quite a few questions in from people as they registered. So thank you so much for those that have sent those in. If you do have questions um, during the session, um, we have the Q&A feature. Please feel free to use that and, um, and ask and we'll get through as many of those as we can um, through the 45 minutes. Um, and if there's anything that um, we've talked about that you want to catch up on, we will be sending out a link so you can watch the session back along with uh, links to resources and so on and so forth. So don't worry if you miss anything, um, you will get the chance to cover that again. So let's get started. Um, we're gonna start just by defining, I think, what we mean by saying when we say that the search landscape has changed because that can encompass lots of different things. So we're gonna start there. Um, so, Steve, I'm going to start with you, if I may. Can you just talk a little bit about, about that? When we say the search landscape has changed, exactly what are we talking about? What do we mean? Yeah, so I think it's important to start off with. I think the elements to deliver a great SEO have not changed. I think what we have seen is a change in how users are searching. I think like coronavirus has suddenly become, you know, the thing that everyone is talking about in Google and using in Google. So that's a big, big topic. Um, Google has actually released some really good information around that as a topic. Uh, Google uh, Trends, which we're going to be talking about a lot more for this session. Uh, they've done a really good piece in there, which shows you lots of the rising trends around coronavirus by country. So you can look at the UK and look at other countries if you wish. And so that's a really good hub for that. Um, but what we've also seen, I think, through see people being in lockdown, is a very shift in how people are searching from a lifestyle perspective. So we've seen things like um people kind of searching more about how they take care of themselves to so queries like treadmill hire to online workouts online fitness classes those are all rising um still wanting to kind of look back to after ourselves so things like how to cut hair at home is on the rise supporting like neighbors and communities so things like nhs volunteers coronavirus volunteering all that kind of thing is also on the rise to so things like home learning to coffee so through being in lockdown, that has sparked lots of new triggers for people to start to search. I think if you've got a business that naturally ties into some of those, that's really good. Obviously, some industries and some uh, uh, clients won't have that. Um, and I think that kind of leads on to one of the third areas is sort of industry type trends. And I think from what the data we've seen, we're going to talk about more, some examples, that shifted quite radically for different types of industries. So I think like travel is a really big one that's obviously been hit hard. The kind of property market, 
uh, from a trend perspective again has, but we've also seen from that sort of thing, lots of new queries coming in around from coronavirus and lots of new questions about that. Um, from the other side of that, from kind of more insurance um, and finance, not such big shifts in, in terms of trends. Definitely we've seen uh, impacts of it, but not to the kind of scale. So I think the key thing is to be thinking about your audience, stepping back, how are their needs changed and how, well, how can you then learn from that and actually start making change, which we'll talk about yeah. through this. Yeah, and I think, you know, as you've said, a lot of those trends have been um, really seismic, but in some cases they're actually quite small, aren't they? Quite sort of granular changes that are, are a bit more subtle. So lots of user-driven change. Um, what about the actual algorithms and, and Google's systems? Ryan, do you want to just cover that for us briefly? What, what do we think has changed there, if anything? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. And, and really from what we're seeing, not nothing outside of kind of the norm, really. We have seen some search results change in appearance, particularly for you know, local listings, just showing that more stores are shut due to COVID-19. But in terms of the core algorithm and how things are being ranked, not really any great change at all. And I think uh, echoing Steve's point, it's really down to how businesses have had to adjust. You know, there's a lot of organizations that were trading both on and offline that are now having to change focus to, to kind of primarily uh, send their customers to that online space. Some which were, you know, completely un unoptimized for search before. So it's for many businesses, it's learning almost how to do um, SEO for the very first time especially if, if you've never had or had a focus on the online side of your business. Yeah, and I think that shift online is something we'll talk a little bit more about later, but yeah, I'd echo that in terms of Google and what they're doing business as usual. I think the one area where I've seen a lot of talk about what, where they're having to be quite, um, quite focused is in dealing with misinformation. Um, especially around the virus itself. So that is one important area where we know they're putting a lot of focus, but that's not something that's new, but obviously there is a very specific angle to that at the moment. Um, Duncan, just to finish off on that point, is there anything you'd, you'd add to that? Yeah, just, just building on what Steve and Ryan have already said, really. I think to summarise is, you know, it's about as much about um, search changing overnight as it is user behaviour changing overnight. And, and we always try as an agency to to work with an audience first approach. And I think that's never been more important as it is right now. Um, we need to be getting as much insight as possible into our customers and, and, and how, their, um, how their behaviors are changing, how they're thinking, how they're feeling, what their pain points are, um, and of course, how they're searching. Yeah, that's a really good point. So I'm gonna stay with you for a minute. Are there any specific examples that we've seen you wanna talk about? I know that in some of the sort of the sectors that you've um, yeah. you work in there have been some areas of interest yeah so at the minute it's interesting I'm working uh, specifically with two clients who are pretty much at, at opposite ends of the spectrum um, on one hand we're working with a US based tech business whose um, product offering is, is really really relevant in the current climate and they've seen traffic and conversions pretty much double in the space of three weeks um, so for them, <clears throat> excuse me, it's about understanding the changing search trends and how these new users are behaving and, and how we might need to adapt messaging and content um, to, to fit with that. Um, we're also playing a big role for that client in helping them visualize and understand that data, um, particularly as obviously the, the C-suite of that business are, are super interested in understanding what's going on there at the minute and what's happening with performance. On the other hand, we've got um, a client whose frontline business has, has had to effectively close, um, as, as many businesses have. Um, so for them, the role of their website has completely changed. It's, it's gone from one of primarily lead generation, and, and that's had to completely adapt. And, and our focus there has been on understanding, again, understanding those search trends and, and customer behaviors, but interpreting that in a slightly different way and we've now adapted our objectives so that we're focused on providing as much useful information um, and being as much of a help to customers as we, as we possibly can be in this difficult time. And we've been able to make some really good progress there as well. So we've, we've added things like a, a coronavirus advice hub to, to house all of that information. And we've also been able to use um, Monetate, the, the CRO testing tool that we're using 
to roll out changes to user experience really quickly as well, because obviously time is of the essence and we wanted to try and get stuff live as quickly as possible there. So, so interesting that at both ends of the spectrum, really, it, it is coming back to those, those yeah. key things that we'll, that we'll touch on throughout this session of understanding users and adapting your strategies accordingly. Yeah, thank you. And, and I think you're right, both ends of the spectrum is probably the apt phrase with that. Um, just quickly, Ryan, obviously some of a lot of what Duncan's talking about there touches very much on the kind of um, day to day things that um, that we've probably all in our, sort of our attendees are probably all experiencing them for themselves. But you've had a few examples as well of that that you were going to share. Yeah, so I think, you know, we've seen many industries that have been hit kind of badly from the impacts of coronavirus, but equally many that have suddenly seen a, a great boom in business. I think a couple of examples I can think of are gardening brands and, you know, all that we at Fresh Air seem to be talking about is which coffee company we're using at the minute. Um, you know, with, with coffee shops, shops shut across the country, that's, we still need our caffeine somehow. So I think, you know, it's about embracing that change and making those decisions quickly that for me has been the real difference between which company personally I'm choosing over another, you know, how well equipped are they to deal with the sudden surge in interest and, you know, versus the people that have, are still playing catch up. I think a great example I saw online was um, a business who had really struggled to adapt to work from home. And as a result of that, they'd lost a lot of business to a, a competitor who weren't market leaders before who were basically able to be equipped everyone to work from home overnight. So you've, you've almost had a complete change in who's leading that space simply because one of the brands was more equipped to, to take that decision and, and run with it, which is interesting, I think. Yeah. So yeah. Thank I think, you. I think my primary point really is don't, don't be afraid to make the jump and you need to kind of embrace that change as quick as you can, but obviously as sensibly as you can as well. And I think the one thing I'd add to that is that, We've talked a little bit about some businesses that have had to effectively shut down almost entirely. Um, but a really important factor to consider is that that doesn't mean that their customers have gone away and it doesn't mean that their customers don't still have things that they need from that business or information that they need. So um, whilst many of those businesses are facing obviously huge challenges in, in even just keeping going, um, those that are able to do something is probably it's a lot less, but those that are able to still do something can still um, have good impact on their customers. Um, I'm just going to move on. We, we had a question in um, from one of our attendees about differences in search from one country to another. So in this example, US versus UK. Steve, do you want to just talk a little bit about that? Because there are a few things that we've seen and can talk about specifically with that. Yeah, so I think um, I think from just the first point of that broadly, you, you're always going to see different results uh, for the same query from a US and UK perspective. Obviously, very different competitive markets, businesses only operating in each area, and Google's very good at actually personalizing that experience. So someone in the US is going to get a much different experience for typing in uh, the same query than if you would me in the UK searching for that same query. From um, a kind of uh, COVID angle, um, you tend to see Google rolling out features and changes or for anything actually, not in the US first. And so we have started to see that. Um, and Google's putting lots of news out around things they're starting to roll out. We're seeing kind of things happening, but still early days. And I think a lot of them we're going to see more and more over the coming months. But things like Google is like piloting kind of virtual care platforms so directly in the search results is one of the things they've announced uh, a few weeks ago. And that's coming out. What, we would tend to expect in the UK is they'll roll out certain things in the US and then we'll start to see that coming through um, into the UK. So uh, from that, um, another side is uh, the big announcement, I think, which is recent, is around kind of Google Shopping um, and how that's now become free. And I think Ryan was just going to quickly talk about, about some of that as well. Yeah, so with Google Shopping is a really interesting one. Traditionally, a well, certainly in recent years, a paid paid for only platform now being tested with organic listings in the US. So I think for many of our clients, certainly, who have got kind of you know, worldwide businesses who, who ship internationally um, and will be bidding on things in Google Shopping around the world, 
now is a really good chance for you to be able to actually test what is organic bring to the game in Google Shopping in the US. And that's a great learning to be able to take to the rest of uh, your markets that you kind of trade in. And I think I'd say on top of that, outside of Google Shopping, Google Local is, is a very different ball game over in the US. You know, every state almost has a different kind of opening strategy that is being talked about by governors, um, et cetera, at the minute. So I would be really, my advice really is to keep an eye on that, see what happens on a state by state basis, because that's going to change your local strategy, not just for the whole of the US, but e even maybe on a state by state basis. It's a really good point. And, and locals are really interesting area right now, because for many people, we're in a lockdown environment. Actually, local searches that, um, you know, just a few weeks ago would have been really popular. Where's my nearest restaurant? Um, you know, how do I get from here to here? Those searches are, are right now um, at, at quite low volumes. That's one area that will have taken a, a significant hit. But as lockdown restrictions are lifted, that could change again very quickly. So there's one area where if you have um, local elements to your strategy, you've got stores or outlets, um, but you haven't got your local search offering up to date or it's not optimized, now is the perfect time to be doing that because you want to be in a position to be ready for when conditions change again. Um, so some really important areas in terms of what Google is doing differently. And again, some of those are, are driven by their own users. Some of those are a bit more um, specific in terms of new features. We also had a couple of questions in about voice search trends and how um, how those impact on strategy and, and search. Um, and we'll just cover that off quickly, but it's actually quite a challenging area because unfortunately, although there are studies out there that show in general terms how voice search gets used, um, that will show percentage of people using voice search, um, there's no empirical source of data that will tell you exactly what people are searching for. So you can't get a data set from Google that shows how people are using the assistant and what keywords are coming through that specifically. Likewise with Amazon and, um, and Apple as well, which means there's a real challenge. Um, and this is nothing new. There's a real challenge in first understanding what the opportunity is specific to your brand um, to build a business case for, for investing in that, but also in measuring the impact and splitting that out from the rest of your SEO work. So it is a, a tricky area. Um, Steve, do you want to just touch very briefly on a couple of the other things that people can do with voice search? Yeah, I think from the data we've seen and uh, looked at over the years is, I think when you look at a lot of questions being asked, um, and I think especially right now, if you're doing really good, I think the feature snippets might come up a little bit later and optimizing for those kind of answer boxes that appear um, in search that happen which are appearing all the time now, really, for any type of question. And what we see a lot with the voices, if you, they're basically using that information, Google is just tapping into all of that great information. It's already got and categorized in its, in its results that you see on mobile desktop, and it's pulling that straight over when you're going into a system kind of world. So if you're actually doing really well in terms of optimizing and getting good visibility in that way you're seeing in, on kind of mobile desktop, then you'll see naturally that transfer over um, to mobile, so but I think as my yeah, the problem we've got with at the moment is that still that kind of gap in terms of data to really be able to tap into that to help prioritise and business case against other areas if you haven't kind of got um, Google Actions or um, in play really. So I think yeah, so I think if you're doing good SEO and all the sort of things with strategy, that will blend nicely into your into voice anyway. Yeah, so it's more part of a kind of unified approach to it rather than thinking about it as a separate thing. Yeah. Let's move on and talk about um, some of the more strategic things that we, um, we've, we want to cover today. Um, obviously, for, for, for the most part, we view SEO as, as being a long-term game. It's a, a long-term strategy that might take um, two, two, three years to pay off from beginning to end. Um, in terms of content and so on. So I just wanted to ask your opinions really on, in this situation, do we feel that there are um, areas where we can have impact more immediately? Um, and kind of 
almost get back to those quicker wins um, for our clients and for our brands. Um, Ryan, do, do you want to start on that one um, for us and then we'll... Yeah, I think it often will come as a surprise to many um, businesses, but actually one of the challenges that I see in my role is, is the ability really to, to get content live quickly. But a positive of the, of the situation we're in right now is that lots of projects internally at businesses have been put on hold. And from my experience, certainly, I've seen a kind of renewed strength in getting content live that had either been stuck in the, in kind of the back burner or you know, just to, to kind of start reacting to some of the content needs and new needs that have come up through um, customers and what they're starting to search for as a result of what's going on. So I think that's really positive in that a lot of businesses seem to be having more time to work on content. And I think related to that, think about what you can be doing quickly rather than you know, planning in that, that long kind of burn evergreen content hub. You know, while that's useful, think about things that you can also test quite quickly, like you know, your page titles, H1s, meta descriptions, an intro copy, you know, the majority of, of what I just mentioned there should be quite quick to edit in your CMS and very easy to test even in a basic form using kind of click data in Search Console before and after. And I think just being able to test that is something that not many businesses actually get an opportunity to do on a regular basis. So consider how users are now searching and start testing those kind of bits and pieces where you can. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think that point about users and what they're looking for is, is really important. Um, areas where you might need to reconsider how you frame metadata. And let's remember that your, your page titles, your meta descriptions go some way towards acting as that almost first experience that a, a customer might have of your brand in Google. User experience and customer experience don't start on your homepage. They often will start in a search engine. Um, so there are some really important considerations around do you need to adjust your framing so that it's a bit less commercial right now? There's been a lot of discussion about being a bit more focused on just helping people out rather than necessarily trying to push a product or service. So you need to really think about the situation that you're in now. What what does that mean to your customers and how can you reflect that in, in what you do with SEO? Um, Duncan, I'm... I'm interested to know what you think about this from a sort of a slightly outside perspective of someone who's not an active seo but from more of a commercial perspective well uh, it's interesting i guess it, it kind of depends on how you define seo in order to answer that question because it can mean lots of different things to lots of different people even within the same organizations and listening to you answer that question, Ryan, then, you know, you referenced um, a number of different elements that people might consider under, under the broader title of SEO, things like evergreen content, right through to, to some of those smaller changes like H1s, page titles, etc. And, and I think when, when we're planning, what it's important to try and bear in mind and try and weigh up is what elements of those can you influence right now? What, what do we think we're going to be able to get impact on in the short term? And trying to focus on, on being agile and, and to, to try and add value in the short term while also not neglecting some of those long-term things that can bring, um, bring a, a, a really nice long-term benefit um, and kind of balance that, that balancing act between the, the short-term gains and planning for the longer term as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. We've, I know we've had clients who are having to very quickly move um, revenue online because they're um, in retail, they're, they've lost their, their customers, their, their retail customers, so very quickly having to address that shortfall. We have one who is in very short order attempting to extend their own direct-to-consumer offering globally. So right now it's just specific countries um, and they're trying to sort of do that really quickly. So in some cases, it's things that you can address in real short order. In some cases, I think those sort of older blockers and obstacles to getting things done that were there in the past have suddenly gone. So there might be a chance to reassess that product project you've been trying to get investment for um, for 18 months that you haven't been able to do. Maybe that now's the time to look at that again. Yeah. Um, I think we'll move on because I think time is pressing on quite quickly. 
we mentioned it earlier, I think, we're going to work on the basis that the fundamentals of how we go about SEO haven't really changed. It's more about the, the environment we're working in and the tactics that we need to employ. But the, the actual um, underlying techniques and methods are broadly the same. So let's talk a little bit about evolving strategies um, to adapt to something that's changing so quickly. And I think this is where we can start to talk a little bit about some of the tools and data that we have available to us. Um, Ryan, let's start with you on this one, if I may. Um, talk to me a little bit about what brands can do around kind of learning from their customers directly. Yeah, so I think really just think about what you can be doing to be building your brand, even if you're not necessarily going to be selling or as much as you normally do, or even at all at the point at, at this point in time. So I've seen a lot of industries where there's people just sitting back and doing nothing, not talking to customers at all, where their competitors are coming in and, and actually engaging with their, uh, their, their audiences and starting to win business. And when I say business, I, I might mean views on content or emails, um, newsletters, subscriptions, just because they're actually engaging with customers at the point where, yeah, we know you don't want to buy from us right now, but actually when we are open again, this is going to be of interest to you. I think a great example of that is um, BrewDog, where obviously they've had to shut all of their locations, nobody can go to a pub, um, but what they've, they've have, have done is shifted all of their message to, look, we've got an online shop, purchase from us here, Oh, and also, by the way, when we are open again, sign up to our newsletter and we'll give you a free pint. And that, you know, that's fantastic. It, not only is it driving business through the shop, but it's also getting people engaged for when pubs are eventually going to be reopening again, which I think is, is really positive. So I think things may be changing a lot in, in the short term, but make sure you protect, uh, protect your business in the long term as well and keep your customers engaged. Thank you. That's, that's great. Um, really interesting points. Duncan, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think um, kind of touching on what Ryan said there, really, I think um, one, of the, one of the biggest challenges that we're seeing from a kind of strategic planning point of view is that businesses have put in place goals and objectives that, that were agreed in January or, or at the back end of last year that have, will likely have had to have been adjusted or if not completely torn up and one of the things one of the frameworks that we've been working on um, with some of our clients is is splitting that strategy into three parts and and those three parts being firstly response followed by recover and then new normal and um, so what that allows you to do and I, and I mentioned it um, a little bit earlier is react in that agile way now but also plan for the medium and long term with those other scenarios and like with any strategy it's not something you're going to put in place and and then just leave it to run um, it's going to be one of those things you're going to need to be constantly reviewing looking at data looking at those objectives and, and where you might have to, to tweak the, the strategy and the tactics throughout may and, and june and beyond yeah and obviously that's going to have to be dependent on how circumstances change whether the lockdown restrictions are yeah. lifted whether they're you know, new ones brought in and and that's where that agility becomes so important yeah the challenge though i think is is in identifying the specific things for your brand and your business of, around you know what's changed in terms of what people want so we're going to start talking a little bit about some of the tools and data um and i'm just going to turn on screen share here because one of the key things is google trends um so if i just get that working Now, if you haven't come across Google Trends before, I think we said in our sort of um, on our website, the page for the, the webinar, that this is effectively one of the most important tools you, you have right now. Um, so I'm just going to touch on this very briefly before we look at some examples from it. Um, it's a tool that allows you to look at um, not the search volume of um, of a keyword or a group of keywords, but the the overall trend for it. So it is based on search volume, but it's a relative um, scale of data. Um, you can use it to look at um, data in a very granular form. So you can get 
uh, pretty much real time data. When I looked this morning, um, the data was up to date as um, to a minute ago, a minute before. So it's really timely. Um, and you can look at that as daily, monthly, and so on. So you get a really good um, kind of granularity to that. You can then use that to start understanding um, what's changing um, in terms of what your customers are searching for, um, potentially some things that you hadn't anticipated, um, even to look at interest in, in your brand um, as an entity, and then start to identify the events that have caused that. Um, that could be new um, keywords, new um, areas of search that we've not seen before, driven by stories in the news, um, potentially things that you've done offline with your marketing, lots of different things. So it's a really useful tool to understand that. And we'll try and bring out some examples here, but just to kick us off with that, a couple that um, I think we'll all relate to. Um, so this is screenshots directly from Google Trends um, showing um, the patterns for groups of keywords related to these topics um, and it's a pretty obvious correlation between these two um, in the last 90 days. Um, my favorite one, I think, what day is it? We've seen that uh, huge spike at Christmas and we're almost at that level. I'm, I'm sure we can all relate to that one uh, right now in terms of the effect that lockdown is having on day-to-day -day life. Um, especially as, as time goes on. Um, so let's, I'll bring this back in a minute, but let's just talk around some of that a little bit more. Um, and the question we've got on this really is, um, now that we're looking at data that's potentially, if we think about the tools that we've used before, potentially really sort of outdate very quickly, how do we adjust to now looking at data that is um, super relevant can help with things that are changing every day. Um, and let's start with, um, should we start with uh, Ryan on that one, if, if we can? Yeah, so I think, you know, Google Trends, Mark, as you've just kind of shown everyone, is, is a great example of using up-to-date data. But I also I would consider other tools that you potentially haven't used in the past, like uh, BuzzSumo and Answer the Public. Um, BuzzSumo in particular will give you a really good indication on what's trending on social media um, in the last, up to the last hour. So that's really important, but I guess it's all well and good having these tools, but how are you, how are you going to use them? And I would say, consider getting someone within your team to, to keep an eye on these tools on a regular basis. You know, don't just be checking in once a week, checking in daily, potentially on the hour, if you're in a sector where things are changing all of the time and have the team more importantly, ready to make those adjustments, whether that be to, to content or, messaging on social media, whatever it may be, get them ready to go just in case something is changing. And I guess my final point really is ask your customers, you know, they are going to be the ones that this is Im impacting. They're going to be the ones that could, at the end of the day are going to drive change within the sector. So I think get customers opinions on how they're feeling right now, how they're changing their opinions on things in, in your industry. And I think you'll find a lot of really useful insights that come from just asking your customers a few really key questions. And you'll, I, I reckon you'll find some good strategic things to come out of that. And obviously that data is, ne is, is relevant to the times that we're in. So if, if necessary, asking customers on a regular basis will, will completely change the way you conduct business. Yeah, absolutely. And I think specific things you can do like running surveys through your website, um, interviewing customers, talking to your customer service teams to find out what the current kind of hot topics are, um, are really important things that can guide you in your SEO strategy when it comes to content. Um, I, I'm often surprised by you know, the businesses we talk to, how that almost seems like a sort of novel thing to do sometimes. And I think it's, it's really important, especially at a time like this, but, but in general. Um, Steve, can I ask you to, to add to that anything else that we can suggest? Yeah, I think um, in terms of just right now, understanding well what queries are driving traffic to my site, what queries have got like COVID or coronavirus or what particular questions are coming up that are probably going to be quite brand related and Search Console is good for that. Um, so that's a tool where you can go in and look at the performance section. And that's updated now, that's normally done daily, so you've not really got much lag. So in terms of 
right now because you might have queries that you're using in rank trackers and all that kind of thing, but that'll only be lists that you've got yourselves. Search Console will give you the ability to right now go in and see, okay, what are those top queries? Are there trends That's change? Yeah. It's new. Yeah. yeah, from a brand perspective. So that'll be uh, definitely really useful. And I think then from, from the Google Trends and things is just stepping back from that audience level. And what we try and do as well around that is think across Google Market Moments. And so that's sort of starting to think about, well, what, what's that kind of intent to start someone searching? And so there's just, four just, um, Sorry, just, just expand on what Google Micro Moments is for us, for those who aren't it's familiar with what very, that is. Yeah, it's a very basic framework that's been out for a while, actually. And Google, what the Google scene is from all the millions of queries they've got, there's four core needs of why people start searching in Google. Um, and actually, when you start breaking them down, you start seeing how the Google results change dramatically as well, based around those sort of four needs. So what they are, there is, I want to know, I want to go, I want to do, and I want to buy. So I want to go right now, of course, is not really happening. <laughs> so as Mark's already highlighted, restaurant queries and all that near me type intents has kind of gone. But I want to know, so people looking to answer a certain type of question, um, is really relevant right now and you'll see good answer boxes at the top for those type of queries and I think what we find a lot with clients is when you're tapping into this research on Google Trends and, and, and that's the public and all these other areas you can start thinking about okay I want to know okay I want to do so that's actually trying to do something so you'll see video being a big part of that and then more buy down kind of the end of that cycle so Thinking along those angles allowed you to group those queries and spot different types of opportunity and different types of content. Great, thank you. I think that's a really good summary. Um, and when it comes to some of those specific tools, we will have a guide for Google Trends on our site. Um, if not today, then by the end of the week, and we'll be sharing links to all of those uh, tools that we've mentioned um, as part of the follow-up. So. Um, yeah, if you haven't used any of those, please do check them out because I think you know, when it comes to understanding what people are looking for right now, they're invaluable. Um, we'll move on because time is running short a little bit um, here. So let's talk about some of the specific, um, more tactical level things that people need to be doing right now um, in terms of their content and so on. Um, and I'm, I may just stay with you, if I may, Steve, with this one. We, we had this question come in about um, how best to respond to these rapidly changing search terms, but also about being heard above the noise. Um, can you um, expand on that for us a little bit, please? Yeah, so I think that follows on nicely from what we've seen and actually done with clients, but good tips is for brand type content, search console, find those queries, and then think about Okay, I can see people are searching for this and my brand. You'll see the list of queries. Have I got content that directly meets that? So we've had to introduce new types of content just to meet kind of basic needs just around coronavirus brand <laughs> to more kind of complex things. Um, and I think what I echoed earlier is in certain sectors, you'll see new queries arise from this. So in kind of um, finance, payment holiday is a new query that's come out of um, obviously being able to um, yeah, kind of not have to do immediate payments on credit cards. So that's a new query and actually you need to think actually have I then got the content to support that need of that user. So I think using Search Console is a really quick win to spot pe what people are asking of you from a brand perspective. Have you got content Agreed. to meet that? Really so cool. essentially find out what people are searching for now that they haven't done in the past. Look at where you might have content gaps. Um, for this kind of new search and make sure those get uh, get addressed ASAP. I think, I mean, in terms of examples we've seen, there's also a lot around kind of changing seasonality with some things or just differences in priorities with one client um, in the gardening sector. They've had a big increase in people looking for, well, how do I grow my own vegetables at home? Concerns around kind of panic buying, um, food security and so on. And when you then looked at their homepage, the emphasis there was all about um, buying um, kind of flowers and um, kind of seeds and, and plants for, you know, those sort of spring planting season. So they were very able then to, once we understood that trend and we used a mix of Google Trends and Search Console, we were able to very quickly pivot the content on the homepage to look at then kind of promoting 
um, you know, vegetable seeds and, and content around um, related topics like people getting into gardening for the first time. Well, how do I do this? Can I do it in containers? Can I do it indoors? Um, so even simple things like changing your homepage content just to meet the different needs that are arising. Um, I'm going to move on to the next question. We've got about five minutes left, I think. So we, we really um, need to just uh, start wrapping up this. But Ryan, um, let's talk a little bit about um, specific things that people can do um, in terms of thinking about the customer journey as well. Yeah, so I think it's, it's for me, it's all about giving users clear information. So if things have changed for you as a business, make sure that you're communicate communicating that um, throughout the journey and that, that doesn't just mean search that means everything you know someone that gets frustrated even before even after they get to search is is going to affect the entire journey for them so I think you know delivery times is a great example of that um, many people have had to extend their delivery times understandably and people do seem to be understanding that but I think where they where customers will get frustrated is if they don't know about those changes until after they've placed the order so what I would say, you know, in relation to search, don't just tell them on your website, but, you know, potentially test it in your meta descriptions and things like that, just to kind of get people ready for anything that might have changed, uh, particularly for regular customers on some of those deeper pages that you've got, um, just to join everything up um, from the start. And, you know, as I said, users are being a lot more understanding, um, but they need to be made aware of any changes that you have had to make. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and it's important remembering that this isn't just about those head terms that you've been focused on perhaps for the last 6, 12, 18 months. This is also coming back to your, um, you know, your existing customers where you might have gone from lead generation to retention. You might now have to start thinking about that angle as well. What about the impact of um, many people be familiar with the concept of EAT? Um, let's just talk about that briefly as well, because I think that ties in quite nicely. And I'll, I'll stick with you on this one, Ryan, if I may. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this, this kind of question on kind of expertise, authority and, and trust depends massively on, on the sector. But what, again, what I would say is that many people are turning to online for the first time in certain sectors. So it's important that you've got a strong selection of, I guess, reviews primarily, but also some authority from an, maybe an expert in your industry. And, and by expert, I don't mean, you know, someone that's been on TV or someone that's published 10 books. It could be as simple as it's the MD who is the author of a piece of content. And actually the MD of a business is an authority for that business. So I think, yeah. you know, just thinking about what you can be doing to kind of get customers in ahead of your competition. I think reviews is a great way of doing that. And I think if you are struggling and, and being kind of inundated with negative reviews, something we've done for a number of our clients is actually implemented a review strategy and it, it can be as simple as just asking customers who have had a positive experience to share that with you and i think that's that's always something that a lot of businesses don't do simply because you know if you're frustrated you're going to leave a negative review versus if you've had a good experience you're, yeah. you're probably not going to leave a review unless you're prompted so it's quite simple but i think it can make all the difference and i guess my final point on that is don't be afraid to, to kind of embed those reviews at relevant places throughout your site, just to kind of back up the content that you're giving. Absolutely. And, and I'll just at this point, just share one thing that we have seen in Google Trends that I think is really interesting in this respect. Um, so we know that everyone will be aware of this, that technology like um, Zoom and Skype and so on, huge uplift in interest, but also web chat software. Um, and that stands to reason because with many businesses having furloughed staff, it's really hard to get through to customer service phone lines. Um, we've seen huge uplift in interest for packages and parcels, um, again, stands to reason, with so many stores closed. A drop in interest in consumer complaints, so right now consumers are potentially being a bit more forgiving. But all of these, again, as we said earlier, don't necessarily mean that uh, your, your customers don't need information right now they really do and, and looking at your brand search results and seeing what's there what are people asking in relation to your brand and covering those needs really clearly is super important and um, let's just wrap up because i think we are virtually out of time i just want to cover this one last question that we had because i think it's really important 
um, which was about the balance between refreshing existing copy versus publishing new copy for businesses that have been focused for so long on kind of that new guide, that new post, new video, etc. Um, Steve, do you want to just talk briefly on that, that subject for us before we yeah. finish? Uh, yeah, so quickly, uh, I think what's also important is just uh, there's going to be lots of new trends. You might spot new behaviours. I think what's also important is not forgetting the priorities of the, the kind of base roadmap that hopefully you've got in place from SEO perspective. We still see a huge amount of a lot of kind of cool hygiene content, content that's just meeting the kind of basic needs of how people are searching. And as I said, this will vary by sector, but as I say, in some sectors, we that's still priority. That's still important. We're still searching for those things, and, they, and actually getting that basic content in play is just as important as now going. Oh, I need to now produce lots of new, fresh content. Um, it should really be working in tandem. I think with that. So I think that's just a critical thing. Don't just ignore all of the core base that you might be doing, and to just jump on new content, meet the basics, but don't forget about that. Uh, I think fresh content can be really useful in terms of tapping into the things we've talked about and getting new content to meet some of those needs, but do make sure you kind of prioritize it alongside all the other SEO actions and really think about what impact that's going to have um, with all the other actions alongside that. Great, thank you. And I'm just going to give Duncan the last word on this. Duncan, 20, 30 seconds. Um, what would you add to that? Yeah, I think, you know, as, as Steve said, you need to consider what's going to have the impact and, and not forget about some of those basics. And I think it's interesting to think about what those basics are. And that might be um, producing that kind of hygiene content um, that, that users really need. But it's also about kind of refreshing existing content as well, which is important not to forget about. Um, because there, we've seen with a number of clients that there's just as much value in, in iterating and improving on that existing content and, and it's really important not to lose sight of that when you're planning thank you great so we need to wrap up there we could probably cover another three or four hours talking about some of these things but we'll, we'll finish it there thanks to everyone so much for attending we really appreciate it um as i said earlier we will um follow up with um links to the things that we've talked about tools and resources um and a summary of um most of the points that we've covered today. Um, if, if you have submitted a question, we've not been able to cover it. Um, obviously, apologies for that. We, we um, could again have talked about these things all day, um, but uh, we will try and um, follow up with some of those. And if you want to get in touch to talk about any of these things a bit more, then please do through the website. Um, so thank you so much for attending. Um, we have another webinar, I think, coming along in, in two or three weeks' time. So again, keep an eye on the website for details of that. Um, and I'm sure that will also be uh, in our newsletter if you receive that every uh, fortnight. So thanks for coming. Um, we'll uh, hopefully speak to you again soon. And thanks to my panellists for uh, for joining and talking through through that for us. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.